Hello, I'm Lee, this is Coon Belly Campers, and today we are gonna be showing you how to fit seat belts into your camper van. Now, when it comes to fitting the seat belts, you're gonna need as much room as possible. This job is possible if you've got things like your rock and roll bed in place, or even some of your uh, interior units. But for the purpose of filming and to make it easier for us as well, we're gonna remove as much as we can from the interior to show you exactly how to uh, get that, that seat and those seat belts fitted. So let's crack on with it. The tools you are gonna need today are a rivet gun, a drill, a ratchet with a 13 and 15 millimeter socket, some rivets, a Sharpie pen, a hole punch, a two millimeter, five millimeter, and stepped drill bit, some touch up paint, a blade, and a form of light. When it comes to fitting a seat belt into your classic van, there's obviously lots of different ways you can do it. I've seen lots of ways of doing it, some safe, some not so safe. I've even seen seat belt kits being drilled through wooden cabinets or mounted through wooden cabinets, which obviously in the event of an accident or a crash or whatever it may be, is not the safest thing. So what the guys at Brickworks have done is source and manufacture a stamped C marked kit that is designed to fit into the original factory points, factory mounting points for the rear pillars of a VW T3. If you own a Caravelle van, now that is a van with window frames, then you will have seat belt mounts already installed into your vehicle, which means you won't need any of these parts. If you have a panel van that's been converted into a camper, so that's most of the UK derived camper vans, and such as this one, see this one was born a panel van, and it's had windows cut out of it. So as such, oh, nearly hit your light there, Nanny. Um, as such, this vehicle doesn't have any of the seatbelt mounting brackets mounted up in the pillars, in the floor, or down in between the A, B, C, and D pillars. So down at the point where you'd have your waist restraints, you will need one, two brackets. If you have a panel van derived vehicle, then it won't have the mounting points. So what we're going to show you today is how to fit this comprehensive seatbelt kit from Brickworks. Now I'm not sponsored by Brickworks, don't have any affiliation with Brickworks. I just like their kit. I use it a lot and their seatbelt kits in particular I've installed to loads of vans and today I just wanted to show you how to do it in case you wanted to buy one of these kits yourself. So all of these parts are available separately depending on what van you need um, or what van you have and what parts you need etc and the actual seatbelt kit as it sits here comes in a left or right hand drive and that's very important that you get it a left or right hand drive because this bracket in particular is handed and I'll show you why later. So the kit itself comes with this bracket, again stamped, a inertia reel seat belt, a panel to allow it to neatly go through your trim panel, the shoulder anchor point, the buckle, and then the in this case, the left hand waist buckle mount. And then the bag are all of the fixings and fastenings you may need to fit this to your vehicle. Now you can choose, it's a tick box option, you can choose to have these templates um, arrive with the kit which will help you mount this part here. Again, in a van with no windows or a non-caravel van, there is a chassis number um, designation for vehicles with seat belts. If you have a look at the Brickworks pages or the Brickyard forum posts, um, which I can leave a link to below, they will tell you in more detail as to what serial numbers, sorry, chassis numbers you should be looking at when it comes to knowing which van you have. <sighs> Hope you got all that. It's a lot of information, but again, I don't just fit 
any seat belt into any van, I have to make sure I get the right kit. Now it's not the cheapest kit. This mount, seat belt, buckle alone, all of this is 80 quid. And each of these brackets are anywhere between sort of 10 and 20 pounds. Um, but you can't put a price on safety. If you want good legitimate seat belts in your old vehicle, this is the only kit that I have found to go for. All right, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through today. So first things first, we're gonna jump into the van. I'm gonna show you the points at which they fix and uh, then we'll get installing it. The part we're gonna concentrate on first is mounting the main part of the seat belt, which is the main lower bracket, which holds the inertia reel part and the shoulder hinge or the shoulder mount, which goes about here. Okay, now you have, it's fairly self-explanatory because we have three mounting points down here and they correlate nicely with three mounting points down here. And your inertia reel sits within this part. Now, as you know, we've already, in a previous video, we've um, sound deadened this van and insulated this van. So the first things first, we've got to remove some of the insulation. Then we are going to mount this point, part down here, only loosely, we're not gonna tighten anything up just yet. Um, and then we are going to find out where we're going to be drilling up here to mount our bolt and our bracket for our shoulder hinge. Um, and then we'll move on to the next part. But first of all, let's get this insulation out of the way and let's mount up the first point. Oh, that's come out nicely. I didn't even need the scissors. So what you can see behind there is the layer of van liner and beneath that is the layer of sound deadener as well. So I'm just gonna do a test fit of this first. And if it touches in any way, even just slightly up against this, I will be removing this layer of um, insulation as well. Because if you touch this plastic part here, that's gonna press on the inertia reel, which means the seat belt may not came, come out or you know, lock in case of an emergency. And the most annoying thing in, this, in the world is when your seat belt doesn't reel all the way back in, especially if you fit in a nice unit like this. So, test fit this first. And it comes with a nice large spreader washer and a locking type washer there as well. Again, a nice comprehensive kit. So this is going to mount in here. Okay, again, that's in there loosely. So, Now, as you can see, that is actually pressing up against there. And that's not coming out how we want to. So, those who have fitted inertia reel seat belts before know that sometimes you have to manipulate the inertia reel to get it back out again. But, as I said at the beginning, that is touching. If it is touching, I don't want it in there. So I'm going to remove that van liner material. And fortunately, there's a nice dividing line in between one side and the other. So be quite easy to remove. Oh, it really doesn't help that it's a warm day. And everything's really, really, really sticky. And it's not going to be coming out very nicely. So in your vehicle that you're working on, you might find some old insulation whilst you're in there. I would recommend if you're taking this whole panel off to do your seatbelt insulation, get behind here, remove all the old insulation you've got, then head over to coombevalleycampers.co.uk, have a look at our products page, and find all of this really nice gear there. So in this van in particular, we've got um, the Dodo hex mat in the black. We have a van liner, which is the six millimeter close cell foam insulation foam 
that is self adhesive and sticks directly to whatever you're putting it on. And it's got the foil insulation layer on there as well. And then here we've got the 100, is this 100 or 50? That's the 50 millimeter thermo fleece. And then that all tucks nicely in there. It's a really good three layer system. So a little bit of a cheeky plug, but yes, you can get all your sound deadening bits and pieces from coombellycampers.co.uk. That is now gonna go in there. And once that's mounted, see that, once that's mounted, there's a little bit of movement in there. So if I get that bolted up, just loosely, one, and three. Obviously when it comes to it, we'll cinch them right up and torque it up. You see the movement in there now, not touching anything. So, next move is to put our shoulder bolt in. These brackets, which are the ones that mount up in this D-pillar, they're universal. So they will fit the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And as such, they have one, two, three marker points for you to align. Now you only need two of those holes to align for one side or the other. And in this case, in this case, this bracket it's inside this pillar down there, in that orientation. This panel sits flat against here, and this flat piece sits against this seam of metal here. So in the event of an accident, it's braced this way and that way. All right, so it's not going anywhere. So we're aligning up this hole and this hole to one dimple and two dimples. Let me just go and get a Sharpie, and I can show you that a bit easier. Next, we're going to concentrate on the A, B, C, D pillar. And we're going to cut out this left hand template. And it says here on this template, align with dimple to body, then drill to five millimeter. Now, we kind of know the position of this dimple already because I've shown you. So we have one punch, we have our template, and what we're looking for is aligning that dimple with this one here. And this dimple here. So you've got one dimple two dimples, and then the hole. Come on. There we go. That's our mark. Right there. That's we've got a drill out to 17 millimeter, and that one is the drill to five millimeter to put our rivet in. So we've now got to enlarge this one to 17 mil. In this instance, I'm going to be using a um, stepped drill bit or Christmas tree bit, whichever you want to call it. Before we put any rivets or plates or anything like that within that um, hole, I'm just going to make sure just to dab a little bit of paint on the inside. We're fortunate enough 
to have the exact same paint that this van was painted with. So let's throw that on there. And I'm going to go around the other side and just make sure I've got it from the other side too. Cool. Now we've got the holes drilled and painted. We're going to wait for them to dry. But when we do, we're going to, once they are dry, we're going to be putting this plate in, in this angle here. And then I'm going to be putting this bolt from the other side through which will compress those two pieces together. And then we're going to be putting a rivet in from the other side through this hole and then closing off the rivet. And then that'll be that plate installed. Now we're going to fit the plate. This is your plate, it's universal both sides. And what we're going to do is feed it into this panel. We're going to put the bolt in from the other side. That is a 16 millimeter head on there. So we're going to feed the bolt in, crush it all together but making sure that this hole is lined up perfectly with the five millimeter hole we've already drilled. Um, and even before we tighten this down, we're actually gonna align our um, rivet in that hole. So we know it's all lined up ready for riveting. So plate in, bolt screwed into a point, put the rivet in that hole to line it up and then tighten the bolt right up. So let's put that in there. Get my rivet. There you go, right. Now I'm going to get my rivet gun on that, mount the rivet in, and then we can tighten that one right up. One, two, three, three. That's it. Okay, so now that mounts in. Right, just undo that slightly. There you go, nicely lined up. And that one will bolt in just there. Okay, so that's a really good start. The next one we're going to work on is right down in that corner. So for the plate down in this pillar, once again, they're handed. This is the left hand one and it's annotated on the website as being left, left or right hand side of the vehicle. And once again, we're looking for the dimples. Um, there's a dimple here and one here. And it's just about aligning those dimples up with these two little cutouts here and here. And if I offer that up in there, there you go, look. You've got two holes lined up. And once again, we're gonna be popping some rivets in. And if I didn't explain on the last one, putting the rivets in is nothing structural. It's literally just to hold those plates into place. That's it. So I'm gonna be popping two in there. One about here and one about there. And what I'm gonna do now is put two bolts in this plate to hold it in position. Then I'm gonna drill the drill using the five mil drill bit, and then we can pop those rivets in. So the bolts that go into these brackets are a special fine thread, they're UNF thread. I can't quite remember the actual measurement of the thread itself, um, but their seat belts generally use this fine UNF thread. You can't just throw an M10 or an M12 in there. Um, and you might also be wondering why this plate has two bolts. And one is, well, the reason is, is because that plate is used for two reasons. If you have a VW Caravelle and it has the standard 
um, rear caravel seats in it, the line of three with the armrests and things. The rear point of that seat actually bolts into the lower one of these, if I remember rightly. One or two, can't, uh, no, it's that one. So the bottom one here is for the actual seat belt and the seat itself actually slides in to that one there. Um, so yeah, in reality, you could probably use either. So that's in there. They're lined up with the dimples. They're lined up with the holes. I've got my marks. I'm just going to punch them. One. I'm going to do a pilot hole with my two millimeter. that to a five and you're gonna have one and two I'll go and get my rivet gun and then we'll punch them in and that'll be that plate installed So I'm going to make a bit of a sandwich. I've got this spacer to go here, because obviously we're going to have either door panels or carpet. I'm going to put that spacer up there, or behind this bracket. Then I'm going to put the smaller one in between, which kind of acts like a, a hinge or a bushing in here. Then we're going to go for that washer, and then a bolt all the way through. So in the same manner, we've got a specific order here for the seat belt. And make sure, or what you've got to make sure of, you get the orientation right. Now I know that looks twisted, but this plate has got to be against the metal work. In fact, we're going to put it on that one, aren't we? That plate has got to be on the metal work. And what you've got to think about is when you're putting the seat belt on, how does it go over your shoulder? So what I'll do, I'll bolt this up and then you can see. So imagine now I'm sitting in the van and I want that seatbelt to go over me here and that is not twisted or catching. I mean it wouldn't be it would be okay the other way as well, but then you wouldn't be getting it straight across the clip going into the buckle as it should be, straight across the lap and then straight down into this buckle here. So that's kind of what we're looking at that the whole seat belt is straight and true and not catching or rubbing anywhere um, and that's hinged on this point and then the next one is obviously if you've got a left hand seat we've now got to attach the buckle right down there but for the moment that's fine don't forget um, we're going to be putting door cards on and when you do put your door cards on you've got to be aware of where the seat belt seat belt comes through the door card so it doesn't rub anywhere. And you've got to make a modification to your door card to put that nice little seat belt guide in as well. But for the most part today, we're just going to be showing you where to mount your brackets. So we're going to go over. The seat belt is going to be uninterrupted here. And then once we've put our door card in, it's going to be uninterrupted here as well, and then clip in. So the next part, which is putting this buckle here, involves me going underneath, a bit down and dirty, but hopefully we can get enough light under there to show you where to go. So this plate is designed so this edge here tucks up into this bulkhead fold. So where the bulkhead comes up and then folds over, this is your point. So when this plate is underneath this piece of metal, it butts up against it. So what I'm going to do is put this in here now, upside down, but we're going to make sure, and again it's a bit more difficult today because you've got all the sound deadening in, but we're going to make sure it 
is in to that point where we want it to be and we're happy that it's sort of centered in there. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four holes. We're then gonna remove that plate, drill the pilots, and then we'll be able to check from the back where we can place that plate up to. And it will be a case simply of cutting out the sound deadening behind this bulkhead underneath the van. Then we will offer this plate up to the back of the hole and then we'll bolt through and rivet through and then that'll be that plate mounted. I hope that will make sense. It's kind of hot today, so I feel like I'm kind of waffling. Um, you probably can tell that it's kind of hot too. Um, so yeah, we're gonna drill those pilot holes now, drill the main holes and uh, line it up from the back. Hot diggity damn, it's hot. Cool. Cool. So what we're doing now then is establishing where the holes are coming through about here somewhere ready for um for us to cut this section out so ali if you do your best right there and tell me or show me where that's coming through those two holes oops go on there's one yeah and then the other boom there's the other one just there oops i'm in my own light Okay, there's the other one. So basically, I'm gonna be cutting this section of foam out. Oh, I'll see if I can do that whilst filming. It's quite difficult under here. You may be wondering why I've not raised the van up on the ramp. Basically, because it's not wired in yet. Because um, I've still not decided 100% where it's going. So I tell you what, if I pause you now, and then I'll come back in a second, when it's cut out. That's where I've just cut out the piece of material. Sorry, just trying to get the lighting right. See there, Ali, if you could just throw a bolt through there. Amazing, right, so that's where it's coming through. Al, if you could now pass me the plate, I will offer it up. Thank you all. And then if you could just screw one of the, the bolts in there, Okay, there's one. Okay, you can see there, that's gonna tuck up nicely against the top of that. You can do it. Oh, it's sounding positive. Cool. Now, if you want to chuck a couple of rivets in there so we can put them and then we can come back up. Cool. That's just one for alignment and then two for alignment. Good. Right. So there we go. I'm very happy with that. The plate sits right up against the top of that bulkhead up there with even the rivets aligned. We've put the paint in and we're ready to pop the rivets in. Let's do it. Yeah. 
So inner bushing, outside bolt. We want to make sure that buckle is in the right orientation for when it pokes through the seat. So although it looks like it should be going up that way, I mean, you can put it that way, it's no big deal. In fact, that's the way I'm gonna put it up. I'm gonna put it up that way. So once you're happy with the position of the buckle, so that is now on there. We're gonna clear out this way. Take a seat. And there we go. The first of our three seat belts is now in and installed. Obviously with the rusty lee bed that we're gonna have in, this tassel we've made sure is long enough to poke all the way through. And you've got it now mounted on one, two, three points and the seat belt retracts in and out as it should. In fact, can I do the test? No, nope. hang on. Yeah, well it's definitely locking and I'm not going anywhere. So there we have it. And there we have it. We have now fitted just one seat belt into a VW T3 today. Now this van in particular is having a left hand side, a middle seat belt and a right hand side, but everything you've learned from this side applies to this side as well. Just don't forget that these seat belt brackets are sided as well as these brackets, they're sided as well. So don't get mixed up. I mean, it's, it's not hard, sorry, it's, it's gonna be fairly hard to mix them up just because the dimples are the telltales. Um, but we've got it all in. Uh, this isn't finished completely because we're gonna need a door card on there. Um, we've got to make holes in the door cards for the provisions for that bolt and to allow the seat to pass through. So when you are making provisions for this seat belt uh, clip or the guide, make sure at any one time that that belt is not catching anywhere on say the door card that you're fitting. Um, it's an excellent kit. I've fitted dozens of these to dozens of vans, never had any problems with them. Um, and it's a very comprehensive kit. We will leave the link down below for Brickworks and their kit and all the parts that we've used today. Um, if you have a look at www.coombevalleycampus.co.uk, all of the tools we've used today, you can buy from our products page. You can buy our merch, our hats, our tees, everything that you've seen, well, me wearing this video and every other video, you can buy at coombevalleycampus.co.uk. If you'd like to ask me any questions or you'd like to become a supporter of the channel, please head to www.patreon.com forward slash Coombe Valley Campers where you can become a patron. And there are four different levels. They start from one pound. Um, and when you become a patron, you get behind the scenes footage, you get discounts on merch and everything else. Keep an eye on our, face on our Facebook and our social media and our Instagram actually for merch. We've got loads of bits and pieces coming out and we're looking to expand our range. But lastly, thank you very much for watching. It's been great to have you and uh, I hope you learned something today. I'll see you later.